Four o'clock, KNYOLP Fort Bragg. Here is the latest installment, uh, or rather the latest installment that I'm up to, of Ezekiel Kralin's story about his friend Deke, who lives in the street, and he got a place to live in a tiny house, in a community of tiny houses, because of a social worker who um, picked him up off the street and gave him a house. And he's uh, he might still be a meth addict and, um, and dealer and so on, but uh, at least there's a place for the dogs to sleep inside, and that's what makes Ezekiel happy. So email correspondence March 9th, subject six doggy sweaters instead of four, part one of two, date March 9th. Amazon accidentally sent me two extra sweaters when I ordered only four. Nice. But it's actually five because one of the sweaters is too large. So I placed it on the back porch shelf for someone else's dog. Uh, Pup. Sorry, it says pup. I'm also pondering the purchase of a cushioned swivel chair, as long as it's under $100 with free shipping and easy to assemble. Meanwhile, I cushion my metal chair with a kid's sleeping bag and secure it with a bungee cord so it won't slip off. Comfy enough. See picture. Besides with I'd, which, I'd hate to not have a cushy chair for the pups to enjoy once they're allowed to return. Now for my latest Deke update. Superb! He dropped by Tuesday morning just after 8 a.m., about 10 minutes after this dreary old pilgrim arose from the dead to start a new day. At least I had a chance to clear my bladder and bowels before he called up to my window, O oh, merciful fate. I gave him $100 two days early, as it's going to rain heavy starting Thursday, and I don't want him to drop by and get the pups soaking wet just to pick up his allowance. Scampy was also present, and she looks pretty good these days, dressed neatly and warm. She watched over the pups while he skipped off to Chevron for snacks. Normally, Deke asked me to guard the mutts, but since Scampy was around and he wanted me to replace the songs on his chip with a different selection while he was gone, he decided to kill two birds with one stone. While I was back upstairs, I checked on her dog sitting twice and saw her patiently crouched down beside the angels, who, I should note, sat facing the front gate, apparently hoping I'd step back out shortly. I would have preferred to watch over them myself and then deal with this music, which only took a few minutes anyway, but I knew this little responsibility was a good thing for Scampy, and Deke was back in less than ten minutes. I've noticed an improvement in her appearance and behavior since she was housed, albeit briefly Two days and oh, sorry, albeit briefly, two days and nights, I think. Hopefully, she'll be less anxious next time she's offered shelter and will stay longer. Having her own space instead of sharing with another may be the winning ticket, and I'm very pleased to report that Deke was once more in good humor, so not even a jot of bitchiness for me to deal with. In fact, even though all these rainy, cold nights, I'm sorry. Even through all these rainy, cold nights, not once has he ever shown dismay or frustration because of the inclement weather, not even during those horrific deluges back in December and January. Shortly after his return, they departed, and I went to Rosenberg's for my morning java, then sat on the steps of a corner store facing Market Street, called Max Muscle, of all things, a sports nutrition outlet, couldn't be more irrelevant in my worldview, My usual habit these days, to stop there for a few minutes while sipping on the steamy brew before returning hovel, not the best ambiance for my taste, traffic zipping by in an urban jungle, no lush greenery to soothe my nerves, but that's all I have. Though something nice happened, just the same, a black fellow in a yellow nylon jacket walked by, then paused to address me with a broad smile and a hearty good morning. I grinned back and replied, and a good morning to you too, I'm just starting my day. "'Oh, well, you have a nice one, then,' he called back, "'then proceeded to cross Noe Street. "'Well, that lifted my spirit, Watson, "'as it's so rare anymore for someone passing by "'to take the time to spread a bit of good cheer. "'Deke dropped by again later that day, about 4.30 p.m., "'asked me to watch the pups, maybe feed them first. "'I didn't bother to ask how long he'll be gone, "'a half hour, an hour, two, nor did he volunteer to tell me.' So I'll take them for a walk, too, okay? I queried. He dismissively shrugged his shoulders and walked off, wheeling a bike on one side and his granny cart containing that 40-pound speaker on the other. I crouched down to pet the hounds while they faithfully watched him fade away into the distance. They knew the routine by now, so calmly waited, tethered to a signpost for me to return with their meal and a fresh bowl of water. I stood there while they ate, my feet pressed against their bowls so they wouldn't wind up pushing them beyond reach though Lucky would just clamp down on the edge of his bowl with his teeth, lift it, and set it down closer, I'm not so sure his sister would do the same. 
I spent about 40 minutes strolling them about, um, feeding them treats and encouraging them to run up and down the sidewalk of a hilly side street. I say encourage because they weren't much into sport that day and were satisfied just to be in my company, sniffing here and there and sitting down with me on someone's wooden doorsteps. Funny how Lucky loves to play rough and tumble with me, tugging on my pants cuff as I try to walk, and standing up with his paws on my legs to grip my jacket with fierce little growls, while his sister isn't the least bit interested, as if to say, you guys are too silly for me. She's just that much of a lady. Instead, she prefers to look straight ahead, ears pinned back in serious intent to watch for whatever comes down the pike as she plods forward, sometimes pausing to look back at us with studied resolve, sincerest little doggy in the multiverse, figuring their master could return at any moment at this 40-minute point or was already waiting out front, me and the brindlekin returned to our spot by the parking meter across from the old ATM depot. He was not there, so I tied them to the pole and ran upstairs to bring down in two trips a sheet of cardboard, a large box that I found on the back porch a few days ago just for this purpose, and a um, sleeping bag. As expected, they eagerly dove into the box the moment I set it down, scratching up the bottom and sides in delighted fury, but finally settled down several minutes later, after all the air had grown, ch- after all, comma, the air had grown chiller, chillier by then, After all, the air had grown chillier by then, so Lucky chose the box to curl up in, and Flacco, the comforter, right beside me. I get it. Lucky chose the box to curl up in, and Flacco chose the comforter right beside me, where she laid her dainty noggin on my thigh. Almost an hour had passed before the sky grew dark, and I, restless, and thought, where the fuck is Deke? Did he fall asleep somewhere? Honestly, good physician, his demeanor before taking off was such as to suggest he'll be back within the hour, even though he didn't put it into words, so I was concerned. I managed to distract myself with my spare smartphone and Bluetooth earbuds by listening to some of Hellfreezer's true workplace tales I snatched from YouTube some days back. He's a treat and a half. Of course, I took frequent breaks to shower the pooches with affectionate pats and scritches, Another hour had passed, by which time my stomach began to growl, and I felt too chill, though promptly resolved that by rushing Havel to procure a thicker jacket. While back upstairs, I also grabbed another handful of doggy morsels, and of course they loved the tasty surprise upon my return. Then it occurred to me, as the pups settled back down once they realized snack time was over, now that no more indigents crash out on the sidewalks of the Castro anymore, for the most part, I must stick out like a sore thumb these days, more than ever. So I'm that crazy old geezer who sits out front of my building with two little dogs now and then who obviously isn't homeless. So people may wonder, what's up with that? At least the cops don't bother me. Knock on concrete. I thought about whipping up a quick dinner for myself, but decided against it, as I'd be in my room for at least 15 minutes, and that wouldn't be fair to the hounds. Though they'd probably sleep right through it. You never know when a sudden disturbance might occur to disrupt their peace, and I may not be able to rush back out fast enough to protect them from any possible harm. So I reminded myself, this is a small price to pay for their well-being. I love their company, and Deke is doing great these days by keeping his tiny cabin. He finally returned shortly before 9 p.m., told me he fell asleep and just woke up a few moments ago and rushed right back. Rather than show any anger, I played it cool. That's okay. We're fine, I told him. I'm just a little hungry, but I can take care of that right now. He grinned in response and queried, Well, did some nice lady stop by and give you ten or twenty dollars for the dogs? Nope, I retorted. Wish she did. Oh, I see, he replied. Well, then, did some friendly street bum keep you company for a while? Nope, not that either, I replied. Just me and the dogs the whole time. So you had a nice time anyway, because you love them with all your heart, right? I had just stood up and brushed some debris from my pants when he said that. You got it, Deke. I always enjoy their company, no matter what. No matter what your highness, you mean, he quipped, telling me to call him boss or your highness is a new game he plays with me. It started just a few days ago. Right, your highness, I mean. I joked back, then offered to feed the mutts another meal before he departs. Sure, why not, he agreed. And off I scooted back Hoffel, Relieved he had finally shown up and proud to have fulfilled my dog-sitting responsibility so well, especially for not giving him grief for returning much later than expected. 
The quadrupeds were not that hungry, only ate half their servings before returning to their nests. While Deke was in the Hohokam smoke shop to purchase whatever, once he stepped back out, I untethered their leashes and proceeded to gingerly remove the sleeping bag from beneath Flacco and tilt the box so her brother would step out. Of course, they weren't too pleased, but were compliant just the same, being the good little canines they are. Though apparently I didn't place the box far enough away, since the moment I dropped the blanket into it, Flacco ran up to it and leapt right in. Oh, look at that, Deke. I gushed. She's back in the sleeping bag. Stop that, Flacco. Deke hollered. Come here. And with that, he picked up her leash and yanked on it. No, you stop it, Deke. I snapped. Just pick her up. And so I did, scooped her up in my arms, said, I'm sorry, but it's time to go now, and placed her gently down upon the sidewalk. There wasn't anything to clean up after their departure, just a sheet of cardboard and a bowl of water I had laid down earlier. However, some other vagrant had dropped a couple of notebooks, a few empty cans, two pens, and about twenty cigarette butts close by, so I decided to grab a broom and dustpan from upstairs and sweep that up, too, after all. The Hohokam workers step outside a lot to chew the camel fat and smoke, and they see everything I do, so I figured this would be a gesture of goodwill on my part. But no sooner had I taken broom to concrete than Scooter showed up out of the blue, accompanied by another fellow who was quite handsome in a haggardly sort of way, five foot eleven, with straight, dirty blonde hair down to his shoulders and a well-built, strong body, and addressed me. Can we talk?' 